In this video, I'll show you how to solve the Van Oost equation to calculate the volume of a real gas. Actually, you can use the same methods to pretty much solve any numerical equations. I said method because I'm going to show you three different methods. Calculate the volume of 1.025 mole of neon at a pressure of 500 atm and a temperature of 380 kelvin. We have variables parameters A and B. They are here, so I'm going to write down the information. Pressure is 500 atm, N is 1.025 mole, R is 0.082068 atm times liter over mole K. You can use SI units. Then this number will be 8.3. Uh, 1446 joule per mole K. Temperature is 380 Kelvin. And then we can easily use the ideal gas equation, PV equals NRT, to calculate volume. Because PV equals NRT, volume is NRT over P. So what we need to do is we need to just do this. I delete this number. I just show you how to use the equation right here. Equals N times R times T divided by pressure done we get this number it's for ideal gas all right over here but now we're talking about a Vanuos, uh equation uh, which is more complicated P is corrected V is corrected P is corrected by this so-called attractive term and V is corrected by this so-called repulsive term all right, there are two corrections. So we need the parameters A and B. A is right here, 0 0.211. B is here, 0 0.0172. Uh, again, this value is proportional to the attraction between the gas particles. And this value is approximately the molar volume of the gas after being condensed into a liquid or solid state. So you may ask, is this solid or liquid? It does not matter. This is just approximation. It's roughly the molar volume of liquid neon or solid neon. All right, now let's calculate this uh, volume using this Van Oost equation. Uh, this is my favorite, favorite method. By using Wolfram Alpha, I simply just enter all the information in Wolfram Alpha. I type up this equation, plugging all the values there's only one variable in this equation and and then I solve it so again I'm gonna remind you I'm gonna enter this equation alright in Wolfram Alpha so right here P plus a n squared over V squared times V minus MB equals MRT so I'm gonna do that alright Wolfram Alpha so I need P right P P is 500 right plus a n squared over v squared. I do need to see the values of everything. So a is 0 0.211. Uh, it's right here, 0 0.211 times n squared, 1.025 squared over v squared. This is the variable. So uh, that's the corrected pressure, and then times the corrected volume, v minus n. And it's 1.025 times B. The value of B is 0 0.0171. Just copy everything there. Uh, equals NRT. Uh, the number of moles is 1.025 times R times temperature 380. And you click enter, hit enter, you're done. Or you click this equal sign, you're done. Uh, Wolfram Alpha will compute everything. Well, it shows you the setup of the equation. Of course, there's no unit here. You need to keep those units in your mind. This is in ATM. This whole thing must be also in ATM. Uh, this is in liter. So this uh, product must be in liter. And then we have NRT over here. Uh, what's the result? The result is uh, uh, 0 0.077002. Okay, I just uh, use three sig figures here. 0 0.0770. All right. 0 0.0770. So actually, you can just copy and paste this URL. Um, or this website, you know, just I I just put it in here. So right now, I can just simply just uh, click. 
this uh, link and you, you'll see all the setup as well. Alright, so this is the first method, Warframe Alpha. It shows you all the steps. Uh, if you're a student, I recommend you to use this to uh, just verify your hand calculation. Um, but if you don't have to take exams anymore, just use this. I use this to solve um, uh, derivative and integral calculus problems, solve differential equations. I use Wolfram Alpha to solve so-called transcendental equations. Uh, something like, you know, sine x is equal to ln x to the power of 2. Uh, the natural logarithm of x to the power of 2. Something like that. Uh, you can do that with uh, Wolfram Alpha. Now I'm going to show you the method of successive approximations. So what does that mean? That means, well, you need to make approximations. And you need to make successive approximations. So first approximation, I'm going to use ideal gas law to uh, calculate uh, the volume. Uh, ideal gas law is easy. It's PV equals NRT. So volume is NRT over pressure. You see the equation here, B14 times B15 times B16 divided by B13 is just NRT over pressure and you get this volume in liters. Uh, but uh, this is just my initial approximation. This is not accurate. You can see the accurate result, more accurate result is 0 0.0770. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at this Van der Waals equation and what I will do is actually I will just rewrite this Van der Waals equation. I get V minus MB is equal to RT over P plus AN squared over V squared. Right? So both sides divided by P plus A squared over V squared, right? So, and then volume is just NRT over P plus A N squared over V squared plus MB. So we got that equation. Now we're going to make successive approximations, all right? Uh, V0 is our initial approximation, and then this is the first approximation after the initial approximation. What I will do is I will just use this equation equals nRT. N is 1.025 nRT. Write this nRT divided by pressure plus A. A is 0 0.211. It's given to you times 1.025 squared over volume squared. So we don't know what the volume is, but we have a kind of initial approximation here. I'm going to use this guy squared, right? So that's the trick. We use our initial approximation and put this V here, this value here. Uh, we're not done yet. Uh, we need to plus MB. B, what's the value of B? 0 0.0171. All right, now we're done. You see, I get a new value, 0 0.0752. It's bigger than this one, the initial approximation. It's smaller than the result from Wolfram Alpha. Well, we're going to have to do successive approximations until the last two values are exactly the same. So I'm going to do this. This time, I'm going to copy this here. I'm going to copy this equation, uh, this equation is not working because this B24 is changed to B25. Actually, what I would do is I would just change this B25. This is not right, so I'm trying to uh, use this value here. So it's actually B27, so I'm going to click this. All right, I got a new value. Very good, because this value is getting closer to the Wolfram Alpha value. That's good. That's progress, and I drag it down. 0 0.770. Uh, I don't know if it's good enough. I drag it down. All right. So when I drag it down, you can see uh, this equation. I'm using B28. I'm using this value. I'm using this value for volume in this equation on the right hand side. Okay. This this B28 is this value. So you just keep doing this until it converges. And I can show you more decimal places so that you can kind of appreciate how this successive approximations uh, gradually converge to the right answer. For myself, 
and the uh, number I'm gonna use six decimal places uh, and uh, I need to make it a little wider so this is the initial value from PV equals RT and after that after that after that after that so uh, we can keep just dragging it down it's gonna converge to six decimal places V5 this is V6 well if you want to have more accurate result you can it's just the display I'm gonna just uh, show you like eight decimal places all right and uh, and now you can see well these two numbers are really close to each other I just drag it down okay uh, if you want to be you know as precise as eight decimal places right here it's just drag it down drag it down I can delete delete all this okay and then I click this look at the uh, bottom right I drag it down oh uh, sorry I think I got something yeah got something wrong here because of that value uh, I can delete all this because if you look at this equation I'm using B27 uh, it's just the label of the cell okay I can start from here and then drag it all the way down to make it converge all right look at all these numbers uh, if you want to kind of just look at more decimal places 10 decimal places you can you just need to make this wider hey look at this look at this it converges perfectly all right seven seven zero zero five one six five eight and then look at this one so, uh, 770052. I got 51658. So, our method of successive approximations provide a total of 10 decimal places. Over here, it's only 7. So, again, if you want to have like precision of 100 decimal places, you can just drag it down. All right, so this is the second method. Uh, it's called the method of su successive approximations. The third method is just graphing. Uh, we're going to graph two functions. One is V minus MB. The other is NRT over P plus N squared over V squared. Why is that? Look at this left hand side. Uh, the left hand side is V minus MB. The right hand side is NRT over P plus AN squared over V squared right here. So when this equals this, these two functions have the same value. They should cross each other. So basically, I'm going to just provide some initial values for this V uh, starting from 0 0.001 okay why don't I start from 0 because if you start from 0 this guy will be infinity you're not gonna be able to plot infinity so uh, and then what's the range honestly I don't know I need to compute this initial calculation using PV equals RT so that I have a rough idea about the value of volume it's gonna be 0 0.064 so what I will do is I will go from this very small number to a very big number uh, to provide a range wide enough uh, so that this uh, correct answer should be uh, kinda within the range so what I will do is I will just kinda you know do this uh, fill series uh, columns step value maybe 0 0.001 stop value let's say uh, because if you use PV equals RT you get 0 0.064 so to be on the safe side I'm gonna use a really large a really wide range all the way to 0.3 alright so that's good and then V minus MB V minus MB is this guy minus 1.025 times B. B is uh, uh, 0 0.0171. 0 0.0171. 0 0.0171. So, all right, just uh, click here and then show three decimal places, format cell. Uh, maybe I'll show you four decimal places. All right, so for them. Uh, why do you see you know negative numbers here honestly when you see negative numbers here that means one thing this van der Waals, uh, equation is not the exact equation okay if you see a negative number here that means either this part is negative or NRT is negative either is unphysical 
So uh, Venus equation is better than the ideal gas equation, but still it's not exact. Now I'm going to do NRT. I remember N is this. R is 0 0.08206. Temperature is 380 in the question. Pressure is 580M in the question. A is 0 0.211 in the question times 1.025 squared divided by volume squared. Okay, over here, volume squared. I'm going to use this volume squared. All right, so basically we have a horizontal axis here, and then we have two functions. One function is V minus MB. The other function is NRT over P plus N squared over V squared. When these two functions cross each other, we have the solution. When they cross each other, that means they have the same value. I'm going to change this to uh, four decimal places. Uh, let's see, four, okay. And then I'm going to double click this, uh, drag it down. Actually, just by looking at those numbers, compare these two function values, you're going to see they are exactly the same somewhere. Okay. Uh, uh, let's see. Oh, somewhere here. <laughs> okay, over here. So these two equations have the same value when volume is this guy. So this is the solution. Okay, this is the value of volume when you have this guy is equal to this guy. Okay, this guy is equal to this guy. So when this function holds true, volume has to be 0 0.077 right here. And of course, this is just the solution from Wolfram Alpha or from successive approximation, 0 0.077. But also, we can just plot this. Let's just plot this. Let's visualize this. What are we doing here? Insert. Uh, I'm going to use this uh, scattered data, and the figure is really small, so I want to show it. Uh, uh, okay, this is too big. Uh, the font size is a little too small, so I need to do this. I need to kind of select all, Ctrl A, and see if I can change the font size. Nope, I can't. Oh, okay. So I just click the Excel graph and change the font size to maybe 28 so you can see it. Okay, I'm not going to add any chart title or, you know, add access title because my goal is to show you how to use this uh, uh, graphing method to get the solution. So over here, this is a horizontal axis. That's the volume, the vo vo value of the volume. And then this uh, blue curve is V minus MB. The blue line is V minus MB. Uh, this orange line is the more comp complex equation over here. I want to show you the complex equation up there. Uh, it's actually NRT over P plus N squared over V squared over here. All right, so when these two functions cross each other, um, oh, uh, maybe it's better for me just to do a control C, control X, and paste this up there so that you can actually see, you know, at least. Uh, okay, somehow I didn't copy the the graph, but it's so easy to plot this again. So I'm gonna just uh, plot this again. Anyway, I want to show you how to plot this again. So I'm doing Control X and screw up and click here, and then Control V. So you have the graph right there and I want to make the graph bigger okay not so big a little smaller than that small enough that I can show you everything now I'm clicking the graph I'm changing the font size to maybe 24 so you can see the numbers and what I will do is I will just move the mouse here and you can see when uh, the uh, two when the blue line cross this orange curve, when this function cross this function, when V minus MB cross this RT over P plus N squared over V squared, 
we have a value uh, for the um, for the um, uh, the the horizontal axis it's 0 0.077 so you just move the mouse there and you see this value 0 0.077 uh, what's the function value? It's 0 0.0595. So, by using this method, you know this is a, a graphical solution. Uh, it's just equally good. You can actually do uh, equations like this: uh, sine uh, x squared plus one is equal to logarithm of uh, one uh, plus uh, 0 0.2 times x to the power of four. If you want to do this. You just plot this sine function, plot this logarithm function, and see when these two functions cross each other. That's it. You find a solution on the graph. Also, actually, you can just use this so-called successive approximations. You just set up the equation properly over here. What I will say th is this. Uh, I'm going to say, well, I'm going to do e to the power of this sine function is equal to 1 plus 0 0.2 times x to the power of 4 and then I can just say well x to the power of 4 is this whole thing e to the power of this thing minus 1 times 5 stuff like that and then I can kinda solve for x and then I need to do successive approximations to solve this another way to solve this is Wolfram Alpha again just you know type up this equation I will show you again so what I would do is I will just uh, use Wolfram Alpha. Uh, I I have like sine you know x to the power of two plus one is equal to the logarithm of one plus zero point two times uh, x to the power of four. You know, and then click equal sign, you get the solution. If there are no solutions, uh, Wolfram Alpha will tell you. But anyway, there are two equations, uh, two solutions. And this is graphical solution right here. Uh, you have a nice uh, sine function. Okay, this is the sine function. The blue curve is sine function. Uh, the red curve is our natural logarithm. And where do they cross? They cross here and here. You have two roots, two solutions. All right. Uh, enough said. Uh, you can use actually the three methods: Wolfram Alpha, and then method of successive approximations. And the third method is graphing to solve pretty much any numerical equations, no matter how complex this equation is, how intimidating it looks, you can solve the equation.